We're going to try something a little different this time. What I'd like you to do is to watch this video, open your eyes, open your ears, open your mind, and then when it's over, we're going to talk. Okay, so what was it that you noticed? Well, the first thing you noticed is that, of course, that I took out two maxillary wisdom teeth. And if you were paying attention to the timeline on the lower left corner, you would see that from the time of injection to the time that I was finished was three minutes and 25 seconds. Now, if you were watching closely, you'd say to yourself, hey, wait a minute, this patient's under general anesthesia. I see a nasal hood, and he started working almost immediately after he gave the injection of local anesthetic. And of course, in normal everyday practice, if you're not doing general, you're doing this under local, you're not going to start doing surgery immediately. So if we actually you know, go back and see when we started the surgery, uh, it was about 56 seconds after I started the injection of local. And uh, so if you want, you can just sort of deduct that from the total surgical time if you want and say that in effect, uh, once the local anesthetic kicked in, the actual surgical procedure was only about two and a half minutes in duration. Another thing you may have noticed is there was pretty much no talking at all during the procedure. I never asked any of my assistants for any instruments or gave them any instructions. You also may have noticed that instead of the usual uh, 
way that I edit the videos where I'm switching back and forth between two or three cameras to give you the best perspective. In this video, you are watching both camera views simultaneously. In the main part of the image was the view from my headlight camera. So you were seeing exactly what I was seeing. And in the upper left corner was inset an overall view, essentially a bird's eye view showing a wider angle perspective of what was going on in surgery. So if you were watching what I was doing during surgery and of course paying very close attention, another thing that you would notice is that my eyes hardly ever left the surgical field. It was very rare that I turned away and diverted my attention from the surgical procedure I was doing. So you may be thinking to yourself, you know, it's a simple case and he's been doing this for almost 20 years. Of course he can get two straightforward wisdom teeth out in, you know, two and a half minutes. But really when it comes down to it is what is it? And that's what we're going to talk about is why is it that I'm able to do this case and do it in two and a half minutes? The simple answer to these questions is my staff. My staff is there to assist me in surgery so that the procedure goes smoothly. They know exactly what instruments I'm gonna need and exactly what I'm gonna do for every case. How do they know? Because they've been trained to know. While my staff is setting the room up and before they call me in and say that they're ready, they've looked at the preoperative radiograph and determined what we're gonna be doing and what instruments we're gonna need. So all the instruments are set up in order and ready to go because they know that the first instrument I'm going to use for removing the tooth is going to be a scalpel to make an incision, followed by a periosteal elevator to elevate a mucoperiosteal flap over the impacted tooth. And of course, we do this to get full exposure to the surgical site. Now, if it's a partial bony impaction, I may be able to use the end of my periosteal elevator to flake away some bone to expose the tooth, but they also have a handpiece ready to go just in case the bone is a little bit denser. My surgical assistant is watching what I'm doing, and if I need the handpiece, she puts it in my hand. Once I've exposed the tooth, I'm gonna use my standard 46R elevator to attempt to elevate the tooth out of the socket. And uh, once the tooth is out, I need to grab the tooth, and I'll either do that with a forceps or possibly with a hemostat, depending on how loose the tooth is. And once the tooth is out, we're gonna curette the socket and then irrigate and flush out all the debris. If it's a bony impaction, of course, we're gonna start again with a scalpel to lay a flap uh, and then use the periosteal elevator to elevate that flap and expose the surgical site. We're gonna use a handpiece to remove bone from around the tooth and then to section the tooth if necessary, and then use an elevator to split the tooth and elevate it out of the socket. Uh, we'll grab the tooth with either a forceps or a hemostat, just like uh, with a uh, soft tissue impaction. And then once we've got the tooth out, we're going to curette the socket. And since we had to use the handpiece to remove bone, uh, we're going to smooth off the rough edges using a bone file. And then we're going to follow this with flushing out the socket real thoroughly with sterile saline. And finally, we'll suture the surgical site. So how was I so lucky to get such a good staff? Well, first of all, I took good people and I trained them well to assist me in surgery. And what was critical as part of that training is that when we do surgery, we're doing the procedures the same way every single time. So they don't even have to think about it. They know exactly what we're gonna be doing in exactly what sequence in order to be great assistants. So what I'm telling you is one of the secrets to being good at surgery is having a great staff with you facilitating the procedures that you're doing. After all, what's your assistant's job? Your assistant's job is to be there to help you. And if they're not helping you, then they're making the procedure and your surgery more difficult. So it's incumbent about, upon you to have them well-trained so your surgeries go smoothly and are less stressful. And you do that, as I mentioned, by getting in the habit of doing procedures the same way every single time so they know exactly what it is that you're gonna want next. And they hand it to you and you get your surgery done efficiently. And so now I'll share with you one of the secrets that you learn as a surgical resident, and that is that being able to do a surgical procedure quickly and smoothly is not from moving fast, but from being efficient in your movements. And the key to developing that efficiency is consistency doing procedures in the same sequence every time so you and your staff can go from start to finish, from one step to the next, 
without even having to think about it. And to share with you my personal experience, when I first got out of training and started in private practice, it would take me probably about 30 minutes or so to remove four full bony impacted wisdom teeth. And now having done this for almost 20 years and gotten the system down and have my staff well trained so that they help me, my average surgical time now is about 12 to 15 minutes. So why should you aspire to doing your surgery more quickly and more efficiently? Well, first of all, the first benefit is that by having a shorter surgical procedure, there's less trauma to the surgical site. And for your patient, that means less post-operative pain and less post-operative swelling and a quicker recovery. For you and your staff, this means that you have more time on your hands, which you can either use to be more productive, get another, another procedure in during the day, or maybe even another couple procedures in during the day because you're more efficient in surgery, or you can get out of the office sooner. You can go home earlier. You can take a longer lunch. You can take more days off because you can you know, get more done in the time that you're there. So remember, consistency is the key to efficiency. So train yourself and train your staff to walk through the procedure mentally before you start so you can have everything you're gonna need ready to go and you can go through the procedure efficiently. And again, the key to that is to do it the same way every single time.